Hey, my Physics 11H friends, time for some conservation of momentum. So, you watched a Bill Nye video, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, you've watched Ben's video. Um, he did an impulse question, regions question, and then two collision questions that are very good. Um, so, conserv conservation momentum is a pretty cool topic. So, um, it's really kind of neat the way it works. So if you have two objects, if we were at school, we would be playing with the carts and the tracks and smashing them into each other. Well, sort of, right? They have magnets, so they bounce off each other very nicely. But what's cool is if you figure out the total momentum of this system before any interactions with each other, right? So the system is the two carts, the, the ground, everything. If you figure out the total momentum of this system... Um, turns out, as long as there's no outside forces acting, like friction, air drag, uh, whatever, uh, uh, outside push-pull, as long as there's no outside forces, the total momentum of the system will remain constant. All right? And the reference table actually gives you an equation for this. All right, they actually give you an equation to, to illustrate this right here. And let's see here. Is this our last? This is our last equation in the reference table in the mechanics part, people. Check it out. P before equals P after. P equals MV. J equals FT time equals delta P. So P before equals P after means the momentum before, the total momentum before the collision or an interaction equals the total momentum after the interaction, or momentum is conserved. The momentum at any given time is P equals MV. The impulse is change in momentum, force times time. So anyhow, the total momentum in the system is conserved. So some pretty cool uh, results of that. I don't have, I don't really have any much interesting here that demonstrate this, although perhaps I... Maybe I have some of the steel bearings. Maybe I brought some of those home. Anyhow, I wonder if I can do anything with markers. Nah. Anyhow. All right. So let's just talk about a couple examples really quick that you've seen maybe videos of. Um, a cart, right, moves, and you have one at rest. Well, it's kind of a cool thing that happens. When this cart, they have the same mass, right, this is moving some speed. When this cart hits this cart, when the first cart hits the second cart, the first cart actually stops. It's kind of neat to see it. The first cart stops, and the second cart flies off with the velocity that the initial cart had, the, for the incoming cart had. Momentum is conserved. This one's momentum would have been mass times velocity before the collision. This one's momentum before the collision was zero, so this is before, this is after. There's a collision kind of in the middle here, right? After the fact, this one's momentum is now zero. This one's momentum is MV. So the momentum of the incoming car got transferred to the cart that was at rest. The cart that was at rest took that momentum away. Um, if the masses of these two carts are different, well, the velocity changes in proportion, all right? It's kind of a neat little thing. Um, so let's let's look at some numeric examples really quick. All right. So um, I'll give you an example. And then you have the ones on the homework. So let's say we have a cart. Let's just make it one kilogram to be easy. Moving with an initial velocity of three meters per second. Let's say somehow it hits a cart that has a mass of two kilograms, all right? So this is before, this V initial equals zero. So that's before the collision. They collide, all right? Let's say the incoming one kilogram cart, somehow it stops, all right? So V final equals zero for the one kilogram cart. I wanna determine what speed at which, or what velocity, the three kilogram cart, or sorry, two kilogram cart, 
will move away with, all right? So the total momentum before the collision must equal the total momentum after, all right? So before, before, before the collision, all the momentum is in this car. So it's the one kilogram times, and we want to make sure we are putting signs on our velocities because it's going to matter. One kilogram times positive three meters per second, that's the total initial momentum. That momentum of this cart is zero, right? After the collision, the momentum of this cart is zero. Momentum of this one is its mass, two kilograms times its velocity, Vf. I'm not gonna put a sign on it, I don't know what it is. I'm gonna solve for that. So basically I get three kilograms times meters per second equals two kilograms times Vf. So I divide both sides by two, three over two, over two, and I get, I'm not, should I write it in the glare zone? Yeah, I guess. I get Vf equals three over two, 1.5, and the kilograms cancel, 1.5 meters per second. Now, you might say it's common sense, Harmon. You know, that one's double the mass. So in order to have the same momentum of the incoming cart, it's gonna have to have half the speed, which, hey, the physics works. All right, pretty fun. Now, momentum is what you guys, most people think of as the term inertia. Like we say, hey, I got a lot of inertia. I'm big and I'm moving fast, right? I'm big and I'm moving fast. You have a lot of inertia. No, 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 no. If you're big, you have inertia. Yeah, that's mass. Momentum is velocity. In fact, uh, if, if, in collision sports, somebody really fast can deliver a hard hit because they uh, can move fast. So they, they can have a lot of momentum. So for example, all right, let's say we have uh, somebody, the initial is zero, right? And we have someone smaller decides to, you know, little aggressive guy here, decides to run at them, all right? Let's get, make this guy's mass 80 kilograms. Let's make this guy's mass 50 kilograms, M1, M2. This person's aggressive. Let's say they can get up to eight meters per second, right? It runs, they grab onto this person, they jump on them, and they move together, right? So after the collision, you know, we have the little person grabbed on, and they're, they're moving away together. How fast are they going to move away together at? So in effect, what happens here is this mass and this mass now... If this guy jumps onto this guy and they go flying, uh, their masses combine now to form one large mass of 130 kilograms. They move away together. So P before equals P after. So before, all the momentum's in the little guy. His mass times velocity, 50 kilograms times positive 8 meters per second. And then after the collision, we combine the two masses. It's 80 kilograms plus 50 kilograms all moving together at some final velocity. That's kind of like the one problem Ben had went over, gone over. All right. So we do the math here. 50 times 8. It should be what? 400. All right. 400. And do I need the units? Well, I'm going to put them. I've already written them once, so I'm good to go in terms of the regents. Uh, over here, I have 130 kilograms times Vf. So 400 divided by 130 is about 3.1 meters per second. And it, the answer comes out positive. 3.1 meters per second. They slide away with each other. Um, so that's that. Now let's, let's quick look at one last little problem with one moving... Uh, in the negative direction, right? So these two combine, they slide away, they slow down, right? Because you've increased the mass together, right? That's, uh, sometimes this is, this is called an inelastic collision. 
because they stuck together. Elastic collisions are where they bounce apart. That's not exactly right. Technically, a, a collision that does not conserve kinetic energy, these collisions, kinetic energy is not conserved typically. Um, we call it inelastic if it doesn't conserve kinetic energy. We call it elastic if it conserves kinetic energy. So, you know, I, uh, I'm not going to use that terminology too much. It's more of an AP physics thing. Um, let's look at one where there's a negative velocity involved. So let's say we have two random spheres, right? All right, this one's mass. Let's make 2.0 kilograms. Let's make it move at a velocity of plus 5.0 meters per second. Let's make this one uh, 6.0 kilograms. Let's make its velocity 2.0 meters per second. But let's make it negative. All right, so it's slower, but it's more massive. It has more inertia. All right, so that's before. Afterwards, these two objects, let's say, um, let's just say they stick together. Two kilograms, 6.0 kilograms. How are they going to move, right? So this is kind of like that gravity simulator if you played with it. The two objects come together and then they stick. Which way is it going to move after they collide? Well, your gut might say, well, this one, the big one's, you know, that's bigger. So that's going to take the, the smaller one with it. It might be true. It might not. It depends all on the velocity, right? Momentum's got to be conserved. So P before equals P after. All right, so total momentum before is 2.0 kilograms. I'm not going to write the units here. I've got them all listed here. 2.0 times positive 5.0 plus 6.0 times negative 2.0. So I have to put the sign in there. This one's momentum is negative. Momentum is a vector quantity. All right. Equals. Now, if they stick together, it's basically like forming one big mass, a total of 8 kilograms times VF. So you got to put the signs in here because when we solve for VF, whatever sign I get is going to tell us the direction that the new mass is going to move. So you've got 10 minus 12 equals 8 VF. 10 minus 12 is negative 2. Divide both sides by 8. Negative 2 over 8 equals VF. So therefore, VF 2 over 8 is uh, a quarter, I believe. 0 0.25 meters per second, but, 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 you got to take that negative side, sign. Negative 2.5 meters per second is the final velocity, or 2.5 meters per second to the left. All right, so they stuck together, and um, they, they float off together to the left at a very slow speed of 2.25 meters per second. Now, there would be a velocity combination in which they would stick together and stop, which is pretty cool. It's just like, mm, poof, stops. Um, basically, if their incoming momentums are the same. So this one, the product of its, its momentum is 12. This one is just 10. So if I made this one move at 6 meters per second, then when they hit, they'd stop. Or if I slowed this one down, whatever 10, over, 10 divided by 6 is, then it would hit together and stop. Um, one last thing I want to mention about collisions are explosions. Explosions are simply collisions in reverse. It's like if you have something, right, and it explodes into two pieces. So the initial momentum is actually zero before the collision. And the total momentum is zero before the collision. Then after they, ex this, they explode apart, right, Let's say they're equal masses. So this was, I don't know, M1 and M2. So the total momentum before is zero. Momentum after is M1 V1 plus M2 V2. It turns out the two pieces that explode, they must have equal and opposite momentums when they explode. So I have this problem about uh, astronaut. I love doing the astronaut drawing. So, you know, it's one of my... One of my favorites, an astronaut, and a wrench. So the idea is, you know, 
let's see, who would it be? Who would it be out there? Michael Berger's out there working on the space station, right? And uh, let's see, Bracton's at the controls. Caroline's helping Bracton in there. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the class is being polite and feels bad for Berger, but they decide to move the space station away from Berger. All right, so they're in there enjoying life. Berger's floating off into the abyss. So how does he get back to the space station? Well, he can throw this wrench that way, and when he does, this is like the explosion happening, the wrench's momentum that way will be equal to his momentum moving back towards the station. All right? <laughs> anyway, I guess really nobody else is feeling bad for Berger, but that's okay. Um, so it's... It, that wrench and astronaut one is uh, an explosion. And I'll talk more about those later on. I'll make another video. That'll be good for today. All right. Hope everybody's well. Talk to you later.